So where I left off, I had changed my file. This is just one flat layered file to just showing the cyan channel and the black channel. And if I wanted to print this professionally, I would need to have it separated into two different inks, cyan ink and black ink. So how do I do that in Photoshop? Well, first I have to isolate the channel. So let's start with cyan. I have to make sure that's the only channel on. When you isolate to one channel, it shows in grayscale. The reason it shows in grayscale is because computers are based on bits. Bits are single points of information. Either a switch is turned on, it's a one, or it's turned off, it's a zero, right? So computers only see in black and white. That color is a light bulb, and the computer doesn't care about the color, it just needs to know what light bulb to turn on. So this is cyan, but in grayscale. Now we have to convert that grayscale to just being solid ink. To do that, we have to go up to mode again, image mode, and we have to change it from CMY color to grayscale. And that's gonna lose all the color information. So now our channel is just gray. Oh, actually, but notice when I did that, I had all of them selected. You actually, can only have the one channel selected. And sometimes, to be sure, you can actually delete the other channels. Right? But then when you change your mode to grayscale, it will keep it as what the cyans were for that channel. Right? So this is now a grayscale version of my cyan channel. Next, to change it to a solid ink, and you have to do it in this order, I change the mode from grayscale to, where is it, bitmap, the first one. So this is also, and this is good for your final exam, and digital art vocabulary, bitmap, which is sometimes used interchangeably to mean a raster image, a pixel-based image, but bitmap actually means black and white pixels and that's it right like a bit is ones or zeros turned on and off bitmap gives you this option so how are you going to make your screen this is where you do the half drop pattern so if i'm at 350 pixels i'm going to make my screen 350 for the output so it's going to put 350 resolution on the dots i create and then how do I want to make it? Do I want it as a diffusion dither? That would be like the sand pattern. Or do I want it as a halftone screen? And you can try some of these others as well. But I've been demonstrating with the halftone. So then you say, OK. Then it's going to ask you, what angle and what frequency do you want? For the frequency, I want these dots to be pretty large. So I'm going to make it only 30 30 uh, lines per inch. And then the angle, this is for cyan. So what's the screen angle for cyan? Who remembers? We know it's not 45. We know it's not zero. Remember, it has to be 30 off of 45. So it can be 75. Usually that's magenta, though. So we're going to do 15. Right? And then what shape do we want our dots to be? They can be round. They could be diamond, they could be ellipse, they could be line, they could be square, they could be cross. Let's do round. Then we say, okay. Now we look at it and we'll see those dots in a much better way than the filter does, right? Because now all the pixels are either solid white or solid black. Now that is my, my cyan screen film work. That's what I would send to the printer as cyan. But digitally, what I could do, I want to fill this in with cyan. So what do I do? I have to select all the blacks. An easy way to do that is to use the magic wand, select the white. I go back to layers. And before I can do that, I have to change the mode back to grayscale. And when I change it to grayscale, it's going to ask me, what's the size ratio? I want the pixels to go one to one. So even though it's going to stay as purely black and white, now it's a grayscale mode, not a bitmap mode. Because bitmap mode doesn't let you do anything except 
have black or white pixels. So now I select all the whites, and then I select the inverse. And then I can change the image mode from grayscale back to CMYK color. And that gives me the potential to now do this, edit fill. And instead of filling it with white, I want to fill it with a color. And then I can find the color. And I could actually get the, the Pantone color for cyan. But it's right here. Fill it in at 100% opacity. And now I have that cyan film layer. Okay, then I have to go back. So let me save that quick. This is the long way to do it. I'll make it easier for you. So I'm going to call this the cyan film work. And I'll save it. Uh, I don't want to save it as a JPEG. And I want to isolate that cyan from the white background, right? So I want to save it. I'm going to select the inverse, duplicate it, and then turn off the background. because I want to save it as a PNG, something that supports transparency. Now, even doing it on just one channel is worth it, because then I can use this as an effect on my finished poster. Ah. But if I'm in CMYK mode, it won't let me save it as a PNG. But it's okay. There's just a lot of changing modes. Now I can go to mode RGB color and it will match what my CMYK color is, but I don't want to merge it. <laughs> okay. So now it's in RGB mode as my cyan film work. And I'm going to save as a copy. This is my cyan film work as a PNG. Okay. Now I'm going to go back in my history before I deleted my channels. And I'm going to just select the black. And now I'll do the same thing with black. What do I do? I'm in RGB mode right now. Or I'm in multi-channel mode right now because I'm isolating a channel. And I'm going to change that to grayscale mode. I have to do grayscale first. Then I can go to image mode and then do bitmap. Then for bitmap, I want it at the same resolution. I'm going to use a halftone screen. But what angle do I do the halftone screen for black? Black is always done the same. If cyan is 15 degrees, what is black? 45. We're going to use everything else the same. This is what it looks like. Okay, then I have to change the mode back to grayscale, one to one. Then I have to change the mode back to RGB. I can skip right to RGB. And then I need to isolate the white from the black. So I select the white, say select inverse. On my layers, I duplicate it onto a new layer, turn off the background layer, and then save a copy. This is my black film work. And I'm going to save it as a PNG. So that's just with cyan and black. You can do it with all four channels. Now, if I open up my full poster, my PSD, So I want to be extra fancy. Oh, here it is. I can layer these PNGs on top of it. Let me 
They should be there. There they are. So black and cyan. So I'll put cyan on first. So now on top of almost everything except my halftone, I have the cyan halftone screen. Look how strong that is, right? I can fade it in to help with the finish. And then I can do the same thing with the black. Give me that crisp 45 degree angle black on top. Then I can also put them deeper into the image, right? And that gives me that great half toning throughout. Even just with cyan, cyan and black. And with so many greens and so many yellows, it helps break up that solid black line and gives everything a finish that I like. So to me, that feels the most finished. To have those different half screens in there. Breaking it up. All right. Now, I told you there's an easy way to do it or one that I've actually done all the work for you, but it's really good to be able to do it yourself so you can really control it. So that easy way, I'm gonna open up a JPEG again of just my flattened poster in Photoshop. Okay, one layer. And we're going to go to what the programming language is inside of Photoshop. This is where you can record actions that you do in Photoshop and then play them back. This is something that you do a lot in digital photo processing because you create your own kind of treatment for, for digital files. So if you go, because this is these are new uh, versions of Photoshop for everybody. We all have new computers, new versions of Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop 2022. So none of us have anything but the default actions. So we're going to go to Window, and we're going to go to Actions. You're going to see it's right next to History. And all you have are default actions. And if you open those up, you'll have a lot of default actions, but none of them are for CMYK separation. And these have existed in Photoshop for a long time. They're not great. What we can do, though, is we can add actions. But in order to add actions, we have to download actions to add. So if we go to our Canvas course, and we go to the home page, and we go to links, scroll down to links, go to, oh, I don't want to show that. Go to our Dropbox, right, our class Dropbox. And sign in you will see right underneath the first folder where you have your print folders, you have a folder that's called Actions for Digital Lab 205. What you can do is actually download that whole folder. There's a lot of actions that I've created in here. All of these. And then some that uh, a photography instructor of ours has created for the lab as well. Actions are called ATN files, and one of those actions is color separations. Okay, now that that's downloaded, we have to go to our downloads folder, and we have to unzip it. So we have that folder. Just keep it in your downloads folder, right? Now we go to Photoshop. In the actions window, we're going to click on the plus sign. Actually, no, we're not going to click on the plus sign. We're going to click on the, the, min, the window options, the little hamburger, and we're going to say load actions. Then we're going to go to our downloads, and we're going to click on the folder, and we're going to select all the actions in that folder. And you say yes. All right. Now, these are created in an older version of Photoshop. So it might ask for you to hit return for permissions on certain things, but they've always worked so far. So let's see. These are like VHS cassettes. 
What do I mean by that? It means this is the shelf 